Hello, today we are going to talk about indexes. Indexes are an important concept of databases, primarily for faster data uh, retrieval, right? So indexes, we are going to talk about what those are, what are the types of indexes, clusters, non-clustered indexes. We are going to look at a working example and we are also going to see how indexes work in the background. Like if you have apply an index to a table on say one of the columns, how does that data get stored in the background, right? What do the databases do? And we are also going to talk about what the benefits and the risks of using indexes. Uh, it's not always good, but it serves a lot of benefits, right? So let's jump straight in. What are indexes, right? In simple terms, in an index is a data structure, right? That primarily improves in, uh, improves the speed of data uh, retrieval operations, right? On a table, like for example, any query or get uh, on top of a table, if you're trying to fetch, then uh, it, it fastens that retrieval time, right? Indexes often create a separate data structure that maps the values of the columns to their physical location in the database, right? So which primarily allows the database to quickly locate the relevant records based on the values in the indexed column. So let's say that if you have a table and if you have in, uh, created an index on top of one column, in the background, they map that index that look the physical location of that column in that database and the columns that are corresponding to that index that you have created, right? So whenever you are actually querying on that field in the index, they are able to quickly locate because the physical location of the database is, uh, is uh, constant, right? I mean, that is not going to change, which is why they work very fast, which is why they are primarily used for lookup operations, right? And we are going to talk about a lot of benefits, but let's see how do they work by taking an example, right? So if we take an example of a database, so this is a table, say this is called books, right? Uh, with five columns, one is the ID, uh, title, author, genre, and price, right? Uh, primarily the table contains information about various books, including their title, author, genre, and price. And the ID column is the primary key column which uniquely identifies each book in the table, right, each row. So now let's say if we want to find the books by a specific author, right, obviously you can search and scan through this database to figure out uh, which are the books that are uh, written by a specific author. But obviously scan is one of the most expensive operations. And if you are working on a distributed system on having millions of records, a scan is obviously going to take a lot of time and that is generally uh, uh, discarded. I mean, it is not a suggested approach. So you create an index. So if you create an index on uh, the author column, so you can create an index, something like this, right? Create index, uh, whatever the index name that you can give on books, books is the table name, right? Based on author. If you create an index like this, what it is going to create in the background, the index is going to store the data like this, right? So if you notice the author column, you have created an index on the author column. So every row in the author column, those are all unique, right? And if you look at the third row, George Orwell, right? George Orwell maps to two books, right? Row in the, in the main table, it maps to the third row and the fourth row, 1984 and Animal Farm, right? Both of those are now mapped to the book ID list in the index, right? So this is a unique, uh, uh, row, the author index is obviously a unique in this case and whatever uh, uh, rows are mapped from the main column to the author, to this author will be uh, uh, mapped to uh, in the book ID list. So obviously we are going to store the book ID list because you can obviously retrieve the remaining of the data from the book ID list, right? So this makes it possible to quickly find. So if you're creating an index and now let's say if you want to find uh, what are the uh, books that are written by Jane Austen, for example, right? It can directly go to the index and directly look up by Jane Austen and see that, okay, it is book ID list number in the list. It is row number nine, right? So if you come to the main table, the row number nine is Pride and Prejudice, right? Now let's take another example, right? With the same table, let's say if you want to query the books by price, right? So by price, again, you if you want to create, uh, you are going to create an index, create index price on the books column. Right. Again, when you are creating this, this index, how will the transformed index, the data in the background look like? So if you look at this, each price here, each row is unique, 
right? And every price that maps to differ, it can be different. Like for example, seven point nine nine is mapped to uh, Romeo and Juliet and uh, row number fourteen, the Art of War, right? So the two rows in the main uh, table, right? Similarly, twelve point nine nine is mapped to row number book ID list number two, ten, and thirteen, right? But every row in the index is an is unique. So if you want to now query by say give me all the books which uh, whose prices are 14.99 it will directly be able to give you 1 5 and 15 because there is a mapping that is already created right now let's take a look at another example let's take a use case of search right search books by author and genre right author and genre so you are actually using two columns so here you can create an index on books and you can provide author and genre as both the indexes. This is kind of a composite index, uh, which basically associates each author and genre combination with list of book IDs, right? That match that combination. So if we look at how this will look like, you will see that every author and the genre, the, the mapping is, is unique and that is mapped to uh, the book ID list, right? So if you look at row number three in the, in the index table, George Orwell and fiction, book ID list 3 and 4. So if you go to 1984 in the main table, row number 3, 1984 or number 4 is Animal Farm. Both of them are authored by George Orwell and genre is fiction, right? So that, that mapping, that combination is the is unique. So which is where this is called a composite index, right? Now, what are the types of indexes, right? This is, uh, this is very important. There are two types of indexes. One is clustered and one is non-clustered, right? In the clustered indexes, you basically have physical order of data, right? Only one cluster per table is primarily applicable. I mean, it is only possible if there is only one cluster per table. Uh, and it is also best suited for columns, uh, which are used for range scans and sorting, right? Non-clustered, on the other hand, they use separate data structure. So the clustered, uh, a type of indexes, they primarily operate on top of the physical order of data, the physical location. They don't actually necessarily create a separate data structure and auxiliary storage or something to, to now pick the data and put it in a separate storage. And if you query, you are going to get that from there. No, no uh, the clustered one directly maps the physical location in the main table. But the non-clustered ones create a separate data structure and transform the data in the way uh, how you have created the indexes, right? Because it does that, there are multiple non-clustered index per table that is possible uh, because it is not directly tied to the physical location of the data, right? Which is the case for clustered, which is why in clustered you can only have one clustered index per, uh, per table, right? And this is suited for quick data retrieval, like right? lookups based on specific columns, right? So now what are the benefits? multiple benefits of of using indexes let me tell you upfront and indexes using indexes one of the primary ways of faster data retrieval first is improved query performance right indexes can significantly improve query performance by basically allowing the database engine to quickly locate the relevant data based on the combinations specified in the query right so without an index let's say the database engine would have to scan the entire table like we spoke about right uh, to find the requested data which is obviously slow and inefficient and mainly like we talked about if there are large tables with a lot of rows then it is going to take a lot of time right next is reduced disk uh, io like indexes help to reduce the amount of disk io required to process a query right by allowing the database engine to read only the relevant index pages instead of reading the entire table right this can obviously result in faster query processing and lower overall overall system resource usage right improved data integrity now indexes enforce data integrity by ensuring that duplicate records are not added to the table right like all the examples that we saw the indexes ensure that every the, the whenever you are creating an index on a column the indexed table uh, that column is always unique it is there is never a duplicate of a duplication of data right so this is basically achieved by creating unique indexes on one or more columns in columns in the table like when a unique index is created the database engine automatically checks for duplicates before allowing a new record to be uh, inserted 
right so if there is a new uh, record which is same as the previously processed then basically it attaches that in the same uh, same uh, index in the same row right uh, like we saw where there was a genre or there was an author which was mapped to multiple book id list it will basically map to the same same uh, row in the index instead of creating a new one right next is optimize sorting uh, because indexes can be used to optimize sorting operations like which can be very costly on large tables sorting as you know is a very complex uh, very time consuming operation by creating an index on the columns like which you are using for sorting uh, again the database engine can quickly retrieve the data in the desired order uh, without having to perform a full table scan right and last but not the least a better concurrency control right uh, indexes help in, con in improving concurrency control by reducing the amount of time that the database locks are held right with an index in place the database engine can uh, read and write data more efficient basically right which can reduce the duration of the database uh, locks and improve the overall system uh, concurrency right so those are the benefits now let's look at what are some of the risks of using indexes which are not over alarming right but there are still risks you might want to consider like one the first is obviously increased storage space indexes can take up additional storage space in the database like as you can obviously understand uh, which can be a concern for large databases uh, and if you have a storage constraint right with storage capacity constraint this can increase the cost of storage and main, uh, maintenance right so that is one of the risks or one of the demerits next is slower write performance like every index created on a table must be updated whenever the table is updated right you have to the index also in the background has to be updated so which results in an additional write operation which can overall slow down the performance of the database right this can be particularly problematic for uh, heavily write uh, tables right like heavy write tables so because every time you are writing the index is also getting updated so this can uh, lower the write performance right increased complexity yes they do add additional complexity on the database design right and can be difficult to manage especially when uh, again dealing with complex databases like obviously if you are running a multi-scale huge distributed system you, you are not going to operate on one table or two tables there will probably be like i have worked in scenarios where in my earlier days in my earlier career when we were using relational databases there was a time when i remember there were 268 tables in one of the supply chain domains that i was working in and that was huge right i mean you you can understand the amount of data being percolated there right so it can obviously increase complexity if which basically means that if it is not properly designed like improperly designed or uh, improperly managed indexes can actually decrease the performance or lead to data inconsistencies right and that can be very uh, problematic because of the backfill or the re, uh, the redrive mechanisms can be very painful right next is maintenance overhead yes indexes require maintenance uh, to basically remain effective include uh, including like regular updates potentially rebuilding or defragmenting the indexes right i mean the index that you created say 20 years back might not work today right so you might have to because the data might have increased the data structure the table structure might have increased number of columns might have gotten added right so you might have to break it you might have to defragment the uh, the earlier created indexes even more right so which basically requires additional resources effort right on the part of the like the database administrators or the database engineers or even if you are a software engineer if you are uh, designing the database then it's uh, like it is uh, maintenance over it for you also and index selectivity in my opinion this is very critical because uh, indexes are most effective when they are when, like when they are basically highly selective like meaning that uh, they cover uh, like they cover a relatively small subset of data in the table right if an index is not selective it may not provide significant performance benefits right and may slow down the query processing so it is very important when you are designing an index just for the sake of creating an index for the faster data retrieval it might not be faster right so for example say if you have if you are creating a table with uh, with say uh, the main one of the main columns say gender right and if you have male and female and option as options and now you are creating an index on the uh, on the gender right 
So then there will only be two rows, right? And if you have say a million records, then half million records will be probably men, half million will probably be female, right? So in the index itself is not faster at all, right? Because it is uh, the, the cardinality is very low, so which can basically slow down the query processing and basically not be effective. So overall indexes are, are an, a very important concept of database design. Any database design, I mean, you will be asked questions even in interviews or if you're designing, I have not come across any databases which does not require uh, right indexes. Uh, because of the kind of query patterns that we have, the access patterns are uh, are are varied. It's not just about about uh, get or put kind of operations, right? There are multiple complex queries, and you want indexes, and they can significantly improve the performance, efficiency, uh, reliability of the of the overall database system, right? However, whenever when you are designing that, it has to be done carefully. You have, uh, keeping a long term view of how the database might operate, how it might change, what you might have to maintain, right? So that was indexes, hopefully this was useful.